Hey, it's Erica. Welcome to more Alone in the Dark. We are investigating. Uh, what's our objective? <laughs> Emily couldn't understand where she was, but it felt like a waking dream. Baptiste, who she vaguely remembered from her past, claimed to work as an orderly at Desetto. He was also looking for Jeremy and seemed to imply that he was chasing him through Jeremy's own mind. Maybe. This wasn't Emily's dream, but Jeremy's, and she was trapped inside somehow. Baptiste suspected that Jeremy was in some control due to a talisman that he had been given by a Miss Jackson, a name Emily recalled to be one of the many voodoo witch doctors in the French Quarter. In hope to find a way back to Desetto, Emily Set out to find Miss Jackson's place. I have a theory. V already, second part, there's a theory. Is this Cassandra's voice? And is she typing up this as, like, her book? Because it showed us in the prologue, she has a book. And then Grace was like, Cassandra, I'm touching your typewriter. Um, and then it's you can hear a typewriter while this while well, she's doing the dialogue for this. So I wonder, it says notes, but I wonder, and it says chapter one, so I wonder if these are Cassandra's story writings in some sense. You have the word, you know, and we saw if the first Jeremy one. had gone missing. The housekeeper said the staff at their Dercetto was looking for him, but Emily wanted answers and demanded to speak to Dr. Gray, the man in charge. While waiting, a young girl offered to show Emily and Detective Conby inside Jeremy's room. The perfect opportunity to look for clues regarding Jeremy's disappearance. And I would say the way it's written, it's written like you're reading a book. You know what I mean? Like the language of it is very much like it feels like you're reading a detective novella or novel. You know what I mean? Emily had never seen the French Quarter quite like this, dark and alien. The only possible refuge she could see from Jeremy's balcony was a bit of light coming from a corner store. So, and it's also like narrating everything that's happening. So it's almost like this is a narration, and when the dialogue is supposed to take place, we see it played out through the cutscenes. Um, yeah, that's kind of like what I'm getting. Now, I don't know if that's true or if that's a reach, uh, but that's what it feels like, at least to me. Um, I would definitely listen to an audiobook if it was told in, like, this accent and stuff. Um, I think it'd be dope. Oh, excuse me. Excuse them what? It's not even 8 o'clock. There was my dog barking. Um, but we need to find Miss Jackson's place to learn more about Jer's, Jeremy's talisman um, for some reason. Uh, that is our objective. Here's our investigation. We have a ring. We were formerly, I guess, Miss Marcus. That's what we learned from, um, uh, I guess. We already checked this out, I believe. Um, Batiste Keys. Family Bible, yes. Sabotage, yes. Okay, so this is, like, I like how this is laid out. Um, in terms of, like, instead of just be like, a list or something, getting this layout's, like, nappies. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Um, yeah, we, these are just things to collect in the game. Uh, <laughs> thank you! Uh, my map is of no use here, so that's what we're doing. There's, uh, Batiste over there. So I'm gonna look around, collect things. I already heard monsters when I opened up, uh, this game. Also forgot, Joey Cobb British. Like, she's... In Killing Eve, and her accent in this is, whoa, pretty darn good. Like, it sounds like she's American, and then it's a slight, like, Louisiana accent. Um, just ever so, like, not, like, very heavy or thick, but it's, like, she's really rocking it, I, in my opinion. What's this dialogue? Are you staying here? For a while. Want to see if Jeremy shows up. That's it? That, that's like... Your sister, she also works at Dresetto? Oh. Yeah, she the one who got his job. Alright, so we can learn a lot more now. Be careful, okay? You said it, miss. See, she, her voice she puts on the accent's great. 
Is that it? All right, a little bit of a talk. We'll go not out back, I guess. Yeah, it was barricaded. We did learn that. So, I don't know where I'm going. Please don't wake up. Oh, God, that was loud. Miss Jackson's, um, so just somewhere over here. Oh, God, that's a new one. That looks like it's going to take all my bullets. It's probably that way, if I had to assume. You can't even hear that. Okay, then why why are you able to ring a bell on a bike if it's not to like lure enemies or something? I hate how you have to throw this and you can't like pick it up and take it with you. Is this where I came from? I th there might have been a few more locked things, but we th there's not a map, and it's not like it's tracking um, a map anyway, so it's it's hard to say. It's saving. I'm assuming we're going the right way. All right. I hear baddies. Ooh. Oh. This looks fun. Um. Oh god, he came bustling through. Oh god, no, that broke. Oh, it got him though. The melee seems way more effective than using this damn gun. Okay, there's another one waiting for me. You can move around with it, but you can't, like, throw it yet. It's crazy. Does it do damage if I throw it at him? There's just rocks everywhere. For what reason? Why can't I pick that up? That music's still going. That music's kind of terrifying. Okay, that's how to dodge. I think I figured that out earlier. Doesn't mean I dodge. Okay, the music's good, but it's slightly annoying if there's not an enemy. Like, I understand he's right there, but he's not in front of my face, so why is it playing? Where's it? Okay, the focus is crazy on that. You see how I like go out of focus and then he. Okay, that's gonna take a lot less bullets than the other guys, so what the heck? Last night I watched Long Legs. Girl. What a movie that was. I don't wanna say anything, because I don't wanna say anything to like mislead you if you do wanna watch it. It was fantastic. Really? Really? Okay. Um. Oh. oh. So if I would have been able to throw that, it could have lit him on fire. Oh, great. Reloading. Well, that's a good piece of information to know this late. Or it doesn't even like explain it to you. That's a thing. I feel like the gameplay mechanics were not explained at all. Um, which would have been helpful. 
And it's like, I was able to access the gun, like, pretty quickly. There might not be another one. I don't got ammo for this. Um. Juju. Okay, we're almost done with the Crescent City. I don't know what it means, or what it has to do with anything, but we're almost done with it. And it would have been, like... Because I feel like with most games, with even no matter what game it is, there's like a tutorial section uh, where it shows you what to do. Uh, and it would have been nice to have that. I mean, I had access to the gun right away without... And I was able to go into all the areas, which sounded crazy, which seemed crazy. Um, I want this, but then... I have to walk like this. Impossible for me to get like. There's my flashlight. Um, a lighter. This must be Miss Jackson's place. Let's see if we can find out more about Jeremy's talisman. All right. Anyways, long legs, really good. Again, I don't want to say too much to like, because I went in kind of not knowing a lot about the film, and I believe that's the best way to experience it. Um, really good. It's uh. I will say, though, I feel like it leans a lot more, like, psychologically horror than a traditional horror film, which is good dope. I feel like there's not a lot of movies that have been able to truly it looks convey exactly that. like Jeremy's talisman. I guess I'm keeping that. Oh, it's a clue. An old talisman shaped over centuries. The engraving of the numbers look like to be less than 100 years old. But the base could be from antiquity. The polished black sunstone in the middle has a glass finish and occasionally gives the impression of hiding a picture within itself. Okay, and then it's hiding a picture within itself. Use it tells men to get back to their setup. It's gonna give me no instruction on how to do that. But yeah, long legs great. Um, I think it's a master class. I think you can really, I need a key? We're not even done here. Okay, the way, the, the bouncing back and forth is crazy between locations like this. Um, but I also think that it's like a master, mastery in tone, cause the tone, whatever you're feeling throughout the film is from beginning to end. And it doesn't let up at all versus like maybe uh, other movies build up that sense of dread or unsettlingness. Um, while you're watching it and while you're watching but it's like from beginning to end it's just who oh, you're in it and i the more time i spend away from the movie the more scarier i find it like i feel like initially watching it i didn't feel like scared really but it's like after it's staying with me um and also nicholas cage great performance i mean everybody was good in the movie um terrifying in the movie that the makeup that they do on him oh he's not pleasant to look at and i'll leave it there i'll leave it. i won't come i won't throw up any comparisons i know a lot of people have been like comparing it especially in like reviews and in the marketing for it but i'll just i'll leave it at that you know what i mean um it's an fbi agent following a serial killer and i'll leave it at that because that's kind of like the basic plot of it all and i feel like what kind of was revealed in the trailer so if that's kind of your thing I know that's definitely my thing. I know I was talking about other shows um, that I was re-watching recently um, when I was playing Spider-Man. Uh, so if you like that show I was talking about because I don't want to lead to comparisons, um, then it may be for like you. Hold the talisman. Oh, what? there's like no, what? I'm not sure what numbers I should use. Maybe there's something in Jeremy's notes. Okay. I was going to say, it's literally, uh, commonplace book? I was like, there's literally nothing. Huh? Ah, no, there is, no, I took a picture of this. I remember. Um... What? Okay, so it looks like three, five, and eight, maybe? That's very hard to read. 
But where were they? I think it was three. And this was five. It was three, five, eight. Okay. What's that picture in the glass? Where is that? That looks like a painting and then it looks like the couch behind me. And a table? From the Haunted Mansion? Was it this dining table? Good to see you again, Miss Hartwood. Mrs. Thompson told me you were here. She also alerted me that you brought a detective with you. I'm very curious to hear what this is. This is this a doctor? About. You don't remember me, do you, Miss Hartwood? We met at your family's house in the Garden District when your uncle was about to be admitted under my care. No, I remember. Sorry. I'm not really feeling well. Oh, well, in that case, have a seat. Let me make you a drink. Yeah, there's something I don't seem about to the have faces made much of an impression uncanny. on you. On the other hand, I can vividly recall you and your parents. Because of our cheerful disposition, I'm sure. Mm. You are far too intelligent to think that. You come from a joyless family, Miss Hartwood. The Thank only you. amusement I took from my visit was discovering that the young lady's drink was an old-fashioned. Very astute. Is that supposed to make you seem attentive or intelligent? Whatever you prefer. Are you ready to tell me why you are here, Miss Hartwood? And why you brought a detective? Oh, he's very I received a letter from detective. my uncle. He seemed certain that he was in danger here. If I find out you're treating him badly, I'll be taking him back with me to New Orleans. Really? Is he going to live with you in your tiny garçonniere? That would be a spectacular way to ratify your spinsterhood. Because you he are well aware that your father would never let him back in his house. No, I have it. Maybe you can bring him back up north. You've been wanting to move back for quite a few years, haven't you? You always preferred your mother side of the family. Jeremy is free to leave with you. I won't object. However, there is one problem, as you might have learned. He is, in fact, missing. He Do definitely seems villainy. No, I'm afraid I don't. I have my staff looking for him. I'm sure he will show up eventually. Especially if he learns that you are here. He is quite fond of you. What can you tell me about his condition? I never heard a proper diagnosis. What is your medical opinion of him? Well, let me think. He is an anxious man, depressed even. Aren't we all? He suffers from a perceived lack of order in his inner and outer life. He constantly complains about events not presenting themselves according to their divine nature. In the dark man? Hard to tell if it was ever anything specific. Jeremy uses the Dark Man as a psychological scapegoat to avoid facing the truth that he is in any way at fault. You don't think there can be any truth to the Dark Man's supernatural existence? Why would you ask that? I... Can we ever be sure? If the Dark Man is some sort of evil presence that is in possession of Jeremy? Well... I assure you, any evidence that you experience supporting that claim is purely delusional. Don't get caught up in mass hysteria, Miss Hartwood. You wouldn't want to take your uncle's place in this hospital, would you? Uh, I'll be leaving now, Doctor. I need to keep looking for my uncle. Do so, Miss Hartwood. I'll let you know if he shows up. That just seems like a weird interaction. Like, I don't... He seems like very villainy. Oh, we're in chapter two already. And he seems very like 90s video game villain type. Cheese a little bit. Detective Carnby. Oh my god. God, I'm I'm glad to see you. I was afraid you had left. Me? You're the one who just disappeared. It's hard to explain. I think I blacked out. I, it was like I went somewhere else. It's okay, miss. You're clearly upset. No, it's 
what's happening. Also, the dialogue is very... It's a very stressful situation for you, I understand. Ugh, no, you don't understand. Just take a deep breath. Why don't you sit down, smoke some of the Perique. If you want, I could even drive you back to New Orleans. I just want to have a talk with Dr. Gray first. I want to stay. I found a talisman just like the one in the painting. I think I might be able to figure out where Tarawea is, where Jeremy wanted to go. That's great. Just stay out of trouble, okay? Let me handle the investigation. I don't know if it's because, like... I'm not crazy, Detective. Not yet. <laughs> okay, catch you later. That was also weird. Like, again, some of the dialogue reads... kind of flat. And I don't think that's the actor's fault. Um, to find an astronomical if a clock... like this can open up doors between the French Quarter and Dorsetto, then maybe Jeremy is hiding in some strange other world. We just like went to... Like the place he mentioned in the book. No matter where he is, it's clear that my search won't be limited to Dorsetto. That's great for us. That's so good. I thought we were having a little haunted house thing. No, we're not. Um, we just fully accepted this strangeness of where we are. Oh, look at where we are. The radio seems fine. Oh, that's kind of creepy. Oh, a rubber stamp. The Lost Children. Mr. Waits! Oh, so now I have like full access to every room because I have Batiste's keys. Repairing the boiler. Saw you notice in the boiler room. You should know Mr. Chance won't be coming back. I got no business being in there myself, but you can take a valve from the wine cellar if you want to try to stop the steam pouring out. Be careful. Okay. We were in there, and I don't think we grabbed one. Paul, you're right about the plates on the boiler and the clock. They have been sabotaged, and I think I know who did it. They have something to do with Jeremy's episodes and how he seems to disappear at night. Right now, it's important that you keep an eye out for any of the pieces. I want to find out if I can repair the plates. Let me know if you find any of them. Lottie. Tell Lottie to take a look at the well in the kitchen garden. The well in the kitchen garden. Okay, now we're getting like a lot of stuff to do. Dr. Elmore Lee Gray is DeSetto's chief doctor. Accounting and all administrative work is handled by me, Paul Waits. Magdalena Thompson, or Mags, is responsible for the household. Jean Baptiste and Charlotte Tabois are responsible for keeping the guests' medical regiments in check. Finally, Jack Chance is our gardener, who can occasionally be seen in the conservatory but is, for the most part, busy outside. There are currently six guests at Dossetto. Malcolm McCarthy and Ruth Talant reside on the first floor. Jeremy Hartwood, Elisabetta Perosi, Grace Saunders, and of course, Cassandra Beauregard live on the second floor. Okay, again, it's kind of interesting how they decided to do that, like, for one, like, I definitely get it, like, reading the letters and stuff, but stuff like this that they have the actors read, and also it'd be different to what is on your reading. I got room number six. Who's in room number six? Uh, Elisabetta Perosi. Okay, so we're, we're gonna go investigate her room. Gonna look around for more clues. We kind of have a couple things to do now. Looks sturdy. Doubt I'll be opening this. Okay, we need a code of some sort for the safe. Looks sturdy. Doubt I'll be opening this. Ah. Cassandra Beauregard. Because I don't want to read all this. Alpha. Very exciting, isn't it? What do you want to put down for reason for admission? What her agent told us. Cassandra suffers from writer's block and needs to finish her moving picture script before the end of June. Mr. Chardot suggests Cassandra's heavy use of barbiturates is holding her back and risks ruining her career. And how should we summarize her personal history? Let's keep it short. 
Cassandra Beauregard is a beloved crime author who managed to pull herself out of poverty and into stardom. Five years ago, she tried killing herself by jumping off a balcony. The incident left her a cripple and now relies heavily on her wheelchair. And for diagnostic impressions? Cassandra suffers chronic back pain following her suicide attempt. She self-administers morphine to keep herself ambulant, but has become addicted and the desired effect is now lost. The drug abuse clouds her mind and she is unable to focus on real life. To save herself from this insight, she instead makes up stories to fill out the gaps in her own thought process, resembling the Korsakoff syndrome. Oh, bravo, Doctor. How will you treat her? First of all, she needs to be weaned from her drug addiction and hopefully it will resolve her compulsive lying. Then look into permanently numbing her pain in her back through surgery. Finally, deal with her suicidal thoughts. Fantastic. With such a short time before June, I really hope she gets better soon. We will do what we can. Again, the interesting dialogue, so you might as well just listen to the do to them read the notes, because there's more there than the notes give. Grace Saunders, 11 years old. Reason for admission? The mother insists on strict supervision by a proper gentleman to avoid further perversion of Grace's adolescence. Personal history? Grace's family possesses modest wealth and status. Her childhood seems ordinary, spending most of her time with private teachers and family friends. Grace's father recently passed away, leaving her mother the sole caregiver. And diagnostic impressions? Grace has trouble dealing with her father's death. She is willingly suppressing her feelings on the matter and isn't properly acknowledging the trauma she suffered. Any planned treatment? Grace needs nothing out of the ordinary. She simply needs parental guidance. Eventually, we can work on her feelings toward her father. Thank you, Doctor. I'll finish the paperwork and get her installed. Okay, what year is it? Are we not, like, I thought we were, like, in the 20s. We're, like, in the 30s or 40s, then. Malcolm McCarthy, 54 years of age. Reason for admission? McCarthy admitted himself to Dossetto, stating simply that he needs some damn rest. And personal history. McCarthy claims he used to work as a lawyer in Baton Rouge, but says he can't go into details because of some legal dispute. His background remains largely a mystery, except for the occasional clue that he drops in conversation. Huh. And diagnostic impressions. McCarthy is an anxious man and an alcoholic. He often tells half-truths due to some deep-seated inability to trust other people. And how will you treat that? McCarthy will take some time to open up. Spending time with Jack's dog or the child should be good for him. Their harmless nature will help build his sense of trust. Thank you, Doctor. Okay. Elisabetta Perosi, 33 years old? What should I put down as reason for admission? Well, Perosi broke into Dorsetto and was found wandering the grand parlor. She was confused and suffered partial amnesia. She insisted she belonged here and offered to pay for her stay. Right. What do you make of her story? Perosi claims to have been a member of the Astarte artist colony some 20 years ago. A claim that seems contrafactual due to her young age. She looks to be and even thinks she is 33 years of age. That would make her a child at the time. It seems fair to say that Perosi's story is untrue. Deliberately so or not. Diagnostic impressions? Do you have anything? Perosi's story is peculiar because she retracted her story about the artist colony. She no longer claims to be the same person as Elisabetta Perosi. However, my staff's research has confirmed there was a Perosi at that time who was in her early 30s. I suppose this case will take some time to investigate. How will you go about it? I wanted to contact the real Perosi, but it seems the whole colony disappeared one night. September 29th, 1915, during a hurricane. I will have to take it slow and figure out what this spell of impersonation could have been. 
Oh, I'm sure it will all clear up eventually. Thank you, Doctor. Things are kind of weird. Um, Ruth Talon, 29 years of age. Reason for admission? Uh, Ruth's father wishes that his daughter be removed from New Orleans nightlife for the foreseeable future. He fears that her overly free spirit is tarnishing the family's reputation. Sounds simple enough. Personal history? Ruth comes from considerable wealth. Her family owns several hotels and restaurants. Unlike the rest of the family, her sense of adventure has taken her around the world, including France during the Great War as a photojournalist. The last decade, she has provoked many rumors of being a debauched flapper, bordering on nymphomania. And diagnostic impressions? Despite her father's frivolous reasons for her to be admitted, Ruth does seem to provide an interesting case. She is refreshingly open and doesn't shy away from talking about her life during the war or her continuous celebration after returning to the States. She is admittedly a sexual deviant and feels no remorse. And her treatment plan? Simply staying at Dorsetto should do wonders for Ruth. If not, at least for her family's reputation. Ruth doesn't need to change, but with therapy, I might be able to share with her some sympathy towards her family. I doubt she will settle down and become as dull as the rest of them, but at least she might try to be more discreet in the future. These seem very interesting. I feel like it's getting background on them, but like their issues maybe in this time period would have been seen enough to be into like a mental hospital, but they kind of just don't seem like anything. All the patient files except for Jeremy's. Okay, getting more of those to collect. Alright. Nope, okay. That's not a door. Try going through this one. I need the key. Whoa, whoa. This. What room is this? Dr. Gray's office? Oh, there's a key. Okay. So there's a direct line from the reception into the office. Okay. What do we do first? Treatment room. Okay, let's just come out here. Locked doors and unsolved puzzles. Yeah, I kind of noted that. Um, we can get into Hiroshi's room. Um, I don't know if the food and wine cellar is still locked, um, but we can go into the library. That seems to be our best bet for now. Um, let's look at that second floor of the map. Um, okay, I'm, I got confused. Hang on. Uh, second floor, first floor, good parlor, mezzanine. Okay. Um, yeah, it really seems like... Turn noises, man. Oh, we're just in here. I can't leave. I need to find Jeremy. Okay, that's the front door. I say we just kind of tackle all these areas one by one. It opened crazy. I don't think we can go into the guarded area just yet. Uh, yeah, library's like right here. Objective, try the keys you got from Beast.
What is she doing? Good evening, Miss Hartwood. That is your name, isn't it? I would be terribly embarrassed if it wasn't. You're right. Emily Hartwood, Jeremy's niece. Nice to meet you. Ruth. Ruth Talon. She's flirting with me. Is that Perrique you're smoking? <laughs> How terribly quaint. Maybe so. But I like it. Would you care to share some? That smell is making me feel very nostalgic. Is it all that you hope for? I enjoy your life, Mockery, Miss Hartwood. I can tell we would make great friends. How flattering. Too bad you're locked up in this place. <laughs> your insincerity is really refreshing. I wish you were mad as I am. Then you could stay. Give it a few years and I might just be. Lunacy is one of my family's few privileges. <laughs> oh, good. I'll be looking forward to it. Okay. I'm just... You don't know anything about what happened to Jeremy, do you? So, Everyone it... here is really strange, and it's hard to know what to make of anything you hear. Occasionally, it sounds quite exciting, though. Good versus evil and all that. I'm sorry, but I don't think I have anything useful to share. It doesn't matter. Thank you for the much-needed break. Bon voyage. Was I just trying to get information out of her and like playing that up? That's all it seems like it was, and I got absolutely nothing. But she knows who I am, and that's what is suspicious. Is it literally gonna hold on that? Okay, that was also that scene took forever. Like I it takes its time with it, which can work, but Lost it's just plantations of Louisiana. Thierry Bricklow, 1917. Their settle was a small plantation on the eastern shore of Lake Pontchartrain. The land was considered difficult for industry and was sold for only $30 to Elia Pickford in 1818. Pickford employed hundreds of workers from nearby New Orleans to clear the woods and build a small plantation mansion facing the lake with a striking Greek Revival temple facade. Desetto kept a modest production of Paris tobacco and indigo that persisted up till the Civil War. During the antebellum era, Desetto was the source of many rumors concerning voodoo and witchcraft. People who traveled the lake reported seeing people dance at night in front of bonfires, bleating and wailing. On June 17, 1862, Captain J.W. Norton of the Union Army recounts leading a raiding party from ships anchored in Lake Pontchartrain in order to seize control of Desetto and free the slaves working there. The captain was surprised to find the workers fighting back with unprecedented zeal. Norton's account describes these men and women as enraged with fanaticism. Pickford reportedly tried to placate the raiders, but was shot in the confusion. Captain Norton left the mansion burning I'm sorry, have this and video retreated to his ships with his men. People reading. Their settle was left in ruins for several decades. The ownership of the land was long disputed and returned to the Ledoux family in 1901. Several police reports were filed during the following years as the Ledoux tried to get rid of a camp of squatters on their land. The police made several visits to remove the trespassers, but the people kept returning. On November 1st, 1907, Inspector Legras of the police charged a deadly attack in order to save several children kidnapped by the squatters. Many were killed, and even more were jailed. The following year, Ledoux rebuilt Desetto, incorporating the surviving stone foundation and adding a magnificent wrought iron conservatory. The farmland had been reclaimed by the surrounding woods, 
so it was no longer profitable to use as a plantation. Instead, the house was turned into an artist's colony. The Astarte Artist Colony was a successful group of artists, including figures such as painter Heinrich Cassel and poet Nora Keith. The group was also known for their beloved Mardi Gras crew called the Pirates of Pontchartrain. On September 29, 1915, a tropical hurricane tore through Louisiana, causing Lake Pontchartrain to flood New Orleans. Due to the remote location of their settle, it took almost two weeks for outsiders to learn that the artist's colony was abandoned. The twelve residing artists had all vanished without a trace. The empty mansion of their seto still stands on the shore of Lake Pontchartrain, with much of its temple facade intact. The Ledoux family currently has no intention of repairing the house. The house I'm in. Sorry, it, like, I feel like that's so important, and I might pay attention more if I have to read it, but if there's an option for someone else to do it, I'm going to let them do it. That seems kind of nice. Are you reading anything good? A Brightness from Afar by Lord Boleskin? It's actually not bad. You know where Detective Carnby is? Oh, you don't need him. You're doing fine. I should probably go. Until next time, Cherie. Shitty? I don't know what that means. Alright, library. Not exactly what I was picturing when I heard library. Where am I in now? Ew. Why does it open up the map right away? Small parlor. Hmm. Can I get that? <sighs> Fire poker. There's gotta be a way I can get that, right? Because I am tired of this pistol. Also, maybe we're fighting an enemy soon because it's giving me weapons. Absolutely nothing. Okay. 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 either or that was like a crazy it wasn't even like a match cut or anything it was just like all of a sudden why are there so many melee weapons okay Yeah, that was weird. It's wet shot. I know there's music. I should be able to break the glass, that would make sense. That was, again, very weird. Alright, we're back out here. Um. We have bolt cutters now. I don't know what that gives us access to. What do you mean my map is of no use here? I'm literally... I'm in the conservatory. That's a library. What's her face is in there? It has, did say something about the fountain. I don't know what's that one or the one outside. I don't even know if I was supposed to get out here yet. Man, man, 
you're the Shenna. What are you doing sneaking around? You almost scared me to death. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to disturb your ritual. I wouldn't have guessed voodoo was in practice at a place like this. The doctor may be all about science, but I know these roots have power. You know what's going on here? I have a feeling Dorsetto is cursed. There are several players with stakes in this game. Dorsetto isn't cursed or blessed. It's a battleground. And it would all be a lot better if you could get your uncle out sooner than later. Okay. That's all I'm trying to do. I wish you the best of luck, Miss Harwood. I really mean that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to look after my gombo. I feel like I don't know if I ever learned anything from the dialogue. A mummified cat. This can't be. What's that? Find a way to reach the broken piece. Can I use the fire poke? No, because I think it's... Okay. Are we able to use the bolt cutters on this? Fuck a key, I guess. It worked. Okay. Hmm, what's this? The axe or the hatchet seem very weak. It's also this. Why does that just allow quick access up? For what? I don't know. another piece of broken plate uh. what what is the holes for I need to turn the water on or something? I'm confused. The housekeeper buried something in the flower patch beneath one of Dr. Gray's windows. She was singing in some Creole language, performing a peculiar bourgeois voodoo ritual. Certainly not an unfamiliar sight in the French Quarter, but voodoo had never felt this bitter to Emily. Emily felt surprised by how much she enjoyed the company of Ruth. There was something familiar and friendly about her, like they were old friends that simply forgot about each other. Despite making a fool of herself in front of Dr. Gray the de and Detective Carnby, Emily felt surprisingly invigorated. She felt absolutely sure that it was her manipulation of the talisman that had brought her back to Dorsetto. Jeremy mentioned two items in his commonplace book that somehow connected him to two more dreams, or whatever they should be called, if Jeremy had two more world to open to him, then there maybe be hide there if he was scared. Or maybe he found a way to Terea. Teroea, the place Jeremy desperately wanted to visit. Excited follow up on her clues, Emily set out to find the old clock in the boiler. Yeah. I don't think we have keys to downstairs, do we? It says it's locked. And it's not unlockable. Oh, there's something in here we can solve? No. It says we can solve it, but we don't...
I... I don't understand. Oh. I don't know what that creaking was. There we go. Okay. Broken plate. Alright, so we need more pieces of those. That knocks off one thing on our list. Um, the commonplace book. I There is so much in there. I don't even... I think we gotta go to... Perosi's room. Um, old upstairs clock. I think that's the plates we're trying to find. Um, and the boiler goes to the cemetery. Um, Talisman will take us there. Uh, okay. I'm just slightly confused. Where does it tell us to go next? It tells us nowhere. Okay. Great times. Great times, everybody. Can't go through there. Can't do anything here. Oh, that dog was crazy. Mirror creaks. She's gone. Vagabonds. It doesn't even let you like investigate it further, so I don't know. Nah, I have no idea. Okay, what is on this floor? Is it Lottie's room? Since we're not done in here. Still need a key for the medicine box. Oh, uh, let's check upstairs, I guess. My map is of no use here. What shot? That's just to get to the other side of the door. I don't. It's a way out. Okay, so this side isn't of much help to us. This locked. I need the key. What about a Batiste keys? Are they done? Sup, bear? Okay, this is the clock we're supposed to investigate. Oh, great. What is this? Hmm. That's it? What's that stain? Looks like some- This must be the clock mentioned in the commonplace. This looks like the thing that held the talisman in the French border, but it's broken and missing some pieces. Alright, we need to find another piece. The- Uh... Okay. I thought I was on the other side. Uh... Sitting room, Grace's room, Cassandra's room. We haven't checked that. Jeremy's room. All back to normal. Yeah, I don't. Nothing in here, right? Emily's here. Why is there a shadow over me? Emily's here. That sounds like Grace. I don't like that there's a shadow behind me. Okay, that's Jeremy's room. Ugh. 
Nothing. All right, what else is here? Nope. Can't go that way. What a strange but beautiful room. Oh, that looks like it's a puzzle. There's what some the aggressive looking rot on these paintings. Oh, it's a puzzle. Look at the shape with the rot on the paintings. I can't move them though, right? That's a... Hmm. That was easy. Well, what does that do? The Astarte Artist Colony. I'm pretty sure they had a Mardi Gras crew called the Pirates of Pontchartrain when I was a child. Didn't we just learn that? She's reading her file. You may need to remember how to get them out again. They are locked up for good reason. I am sure she is still able to whisper the answer in the ears of the wrong people. But not for long. I will see her burn soon enough. That black goat will be sacrificed to put an end to it all. Then it will all be over. No more Terceto, and sadly, no Astarte. Those good pirates of Pontchartrain. May you still sail the lake until you find the shores of Hali. Okay, and then there's Aquarius, Sagittarius, and Scorpio with 1, 10, and 11. I guess that means... Yeah, that goes, doesn't that go in, like, order of the year? And so Aquarius starts in January, which I am, hello. Um, so they just go by, like, whatever kind of month they start in. Or something like that. Hmm, are these zodiac signs? There isn't a damn Aquarius in here. <sighs> what do you mean? I did it. I crossed the thresholds to my intended destination without a focusing device. My talisman now knows these roads, and I have no need for the plates. I can find my way to Lafayette as easy as I find my own room. I okay. visited the grave of my father and seen the oven waiting for me. Thank you for opening these doors. I now must summon my courage and go back to that hateful mound outside the oil rig. I hope you'll be feeling better when I return, Jeremy. Okay. I don't... I don't know, maybe that has to do with the Aquarius puzzle? William, Franklin, Nora. Nine, two... And four. Okay, hang on. I need a second to figure this out. Okay, so I think... What was it? Damn it, what was it again? It's Franklin, William, and Nora. So it's two, nine, and four. Two, nine, four. And if we look this at our... Okay, Pisces, Libra, and Taurus. Pisces, Libra, Taurus. Oh, God. Is that Pisces? Libra. Taurus. Ah, here we go. That wasn't too difficult. Okay, we got to the broken plate. That was kind of easy. Why did it go to black like that? Okay, so that wasn't too difficult to figure out. Right? Okay. We are in the sunken place. 
Ew! Is it making monsters? Ow. It just flashes weirdly in and out. I don't understand what's happening. Throw me either. The deception didn't move, did they? All right, we got the other plate. I think I've seen this somewhere. Girl, where? Okay, I see what's happening. Uh, how do you? Oh, there you wrote. That's how you rotate. Okay, so the middle stays the same, and then these gotta move. That is obviously not where that one goes. There we go. Oh, no, you stay. That looks right, and then this one, I believe, will go here. Yep. That's not right? There's something in Jeremy's notebook about this. Okay, let's look at the notebook again. Um, oh, it's Lottie's. Um, Suddenly. I... Suddenly, Jeremy's bleak dreamscape devoured Emily, drowning her in dread and darkness. Only two moments later spit her out again. What had happened and why? Was that her doing? Or did someone else make it so? I don't know. It lasted for like a minute. I'm not necessarily interested in figuring that out right now. Okay, which one? It's that bottom left one. I mean, I can't make up the symbols either way, but that one extends long, it goes down, and then down again. Is that not what I have? I see. So maybe... No. Maybe it's this one and this one. Yeah, that looks right. Yeah, that looks right. Is that not right? It, like, kicked me out, like, when I finished it properly. That is so what's right. I don't... Is it like these that are mixed up? No. No, that was... Oh, I see. I see what it is. It's this that has a blood on it. Is it not? Do I have to switch these ones? For no reason? There we go. I did not see a reason to did it break. The clock just stopped. What? It's on three, six, and four. Hmm. Okay, what's the order here? Three, four, and six. Let's try that. Nope. Three. Well, we know it's that number of combination, right? Um... So we did three. 
Let me try it again. Nope. Uh, four, six, three, maybe? Oh, wait, no, no, no. Okay, I see. So the smaller one has to be three. The medium one has to be four. And then the big one has to be six. So. This has to be six. This has to be four. There we go. It's showing me something. That's just the hallway outside Jeremy's room, isn't it? I was just in there. That I did not turn the camera that way. It went it is making sure you know to go back here. I don't know for what. Great, it's dark now. Emily deserved a sense of triumph, but she was too on edge to appreciate her success. There was no reasonable explanation why the talisman let her open up this other world. Was this really happening, or was this somehow all in her mind? There was no time to question her own sanity. She had to find Jeremy. If he was here, she thought, would she find Jeremy in the hateful mound? All right, then we gotta go this way. Oh, God. Where are we? I did it. I opened up another dream. Is that what we're calling this? For Germans of the hateful mound beyond the oil rig. Alright, we can't go that way, so we gotta go this way. The static of this is really cool. Like, I like this environment. <clears throat> I need bullets. May 1923, Monday. All okay, ready for delivery. Maintenance, oil pump must be serviced. Any tampering causes large spills unless properly forestalled. Tuesday, shipment delayed but delivered. Maintenance, service bridge close to broken. Wednesday, prospectors reluctantly agreed to show the burial mound to Mr. Hotwood, a painter, who read about our finds in the papers. He means to return tomorrow and try to find a way inside. Thursday. Mr. Hartwood's efforts delayed. The workers seemed nervous about his presence. Hartwood promised not to return to the compound. Instead, he has taken up an offer by L'Officier, the riverboat captain. Officier. He means to pilot him to the site tomorrow morning. Hopefully, that's the end. Work can resume. Maintenance. Bridge from the oil tower to the bayou has collapsed. Sabotage suspected. Oh, what of? This is the devil that guides us now. Oh my god, who said that? That was creepy. Huh. Thank you. One! Really now? I still got a melee? I still got a melee. Nothing? Really? Can I get a map? Because guess what? My map is of no use here. I need the key. What? Okay, we need so many keys. Check out over here. 
I know they can be used for that. It gives me, like, why am I getting this tutorial now? I needed it way before. Hmm, there's something missing. All right, I need to get across the bridge. There's a key. Hmm. I think I know where that'll take us. Oh, I need that because I accidentally be drinking way too much. Nine. Okay, let us. Ah, it was locked, so you had to go the other way. I don't. Again, I wish I could carry like a throwable in my inventory that would be nice the puzzles don't seem too complicated i did pick the standard version though so i don't know how much they differ from not doing it the way i'm playing it okay that's how we can jump down Bridge lever. Okay, we got that. Yeah. Ah, here we go. Again, it seems pretty straightforward. I hear something though. about to break so might as well go get the other one it wouldn't let me run for a minute I can't run now who's up here wasn't it yeah again melee weapons seem to be the way to go So he just pop up out the ground. That's fun. I said could have thrown that. I thought I would have to crank that thing. All right, let's go before it collapses. It did say it was broken. that way. Alright, we'll go up top. Okay. Alright, give me another pipe. They can fly. Yeah, come at me. Oh my god. Okay. Why should be confident on me? Yeah, that, I should have got that first. Got a hatchet again, though. That's exciting. Okay, so if he does that, then he makes me weird. Really? R1 to attack. Okay. Am I on the run?
Come back. Oh, I didn't know he was there. Can I get that back? You see the light shaking right there? Okay, there's just monsters everywhere. There's nothing in here except for a couple bullets that you waste because there's an enemy in here. Unless you just grab it and run. I guess that's an option too. One bullet does not help me. I had so much ammo at the beginning, now look at us. I don't know, I'm just checking everything is what I'm doing. Okay, see that was worth it because then we got a statue. A uh, a gazing statue. Okay, that's okay, it's getting weird. Nothing, that was it. Okay, great. So now I think we're gonna resort to running everywhere because we're low on ammo, we're low on health. Doesn't sound like there's a monster in here. Hmm. Okay, we're restocking a little. I don't think, yeah, map. Oh, I can sneak? How come I didn't know I could sneak this whole time? I don't know what 
I did. Oh, I set it all on fire. Oh. Oh, Lord. Well, this is terrifying. Emily, no, go back. I gotta go forward, really? Everything is on fire beneath you. There we go. I got stuck again. Hopefully that takes care of the monsters. Oh lord, what is... Now what? Yeah. Huh? A tough cloth. What does this gotta do with me? I gotta go back? To what? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not understanding. Oh. Really? That's what I- Are you kidding me? I guess. Sure, I guess it makes sense. At least she looked happy there when she landed. I need some drink. And let's just go to full health. I probably need some health back there, but it's alright. Great, I'm just gonna run. Again, I know it says to- <gasps> Holy! Uh, my pistol's not gonna- <laughs> Not gonna help me against that one. Alright, you know what, we're sneaking. Alright, I feel like the pace of the game picked up a little bit towards the end. Once we get out of here, I'll probably end the video, because I can't make my videos too long, because my computer hates it. It will take five days to export. It's the hateful Mal Jeremy mentioned in his book. This is it? I'm just keeping this going, because this is interesting. Jeremy, <laughs> you dropped your- <gasps> Mrs. Marcus? Get off of me! What are you doing here? Trying to find my uncle. Jeremy is your uncle? How could nobody could do- you, Please? Well, I guess my last name was Marcus. Thank you. And it's Miss Hartwood. You don't remember me? I remember you, Mr. Bois. I met your brother, Batiste, earlier. I suppose he hadn't found Jeremy either then. We spread out to find him. Can I have this? I'm trying to get to Tarawea. Fine. Believe the rest. I just want Jeremy to come looking. We have to leave before it comes inside. What? Where? Come quick. The way I go in and out God of these worlds is... Oh. 
jarring transitions. They're not smooth at all. And it, it would have been nice if they came up with like a transition to make those transitions a little better. Um, I'm back at Dorsetto. Yeah, and then we will. Uh, we went to the hateful mail, that's for sure. And we will continue on what the hell we're going to do in the next part. Oh, we're back here in this room. That's crazy. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. I feel like once we got to the other world, the pace did pick up a little bit. Um, so I'm kind of a little bit invested just because that was interesting to look at and very interesting to play. Um, but yeah, so I'm starting to enjoy this now a lot more than I feel like I have the entire time. I was like almost falling asleep earlier um, with all the heavy reading that they do. Um, but yeah, that's gonna do it for this part. Please join me for the next part of Alone in the Dark. Um, we're in chapter two. There's three or four chapters, I believe. So I don't, it's only like a handful. It's not a super long game. Um, but yes, thank you for joining me and I shall see you in the next part. Don't forget to do YouTube things if you did like this and it really does help on my channel tremendously um, when you do decide to do the YouTube things. So yeah, now I did something to my outro. I'll see you in the next part. Bye.